So today in this video, we're going to talk about IELTS writing task one for the academic version of the exam, and we'll discuss this bar graphs. So let's look at first what does a bar graph look like. For example, this is the graph here. This is what a bar graph looks like. And let this with the question, which says the chart shows the expenditure on consumer goods by two genders in 2016. So that's what the question is. Now, first of all, what are we going to do is, we're going to look at the graph and understand what does it involve. So if you look, there's an x-axis which has how many consumer goods? Five consumer goods. Cars, computers, books, perfumes and cameras. And what does the y-axis have? The y-axis has the expenditure in dollars in thousands. For example, if you look at the first graph, the first bar for cars, the green one, it is about 450,000. So this means who, and this is the key. The key has males and females. The green one, the green bars are for males and the black bars, the lined ones and the black ones are for the females. So what does this tell you? This tells you how much males spent on a consumer good called cars in thousands of dollars. So this is the basic crux of the graph here. So in the first part, we try to understand what the graph is about, about the x-axis, the y-axis, what are the different goods, the consumer goods that have been portrayed on the graph. And we understood the key. Now what is the next part? We're going to plan a writing. How we are going to write? In what, how many paragraphs we are going to write? And how we are going to logically divide our writing into various paragraphs? So the structure of the writing is what we are basically going to discuss now. So how will the structure of your report look like? The structure will look like the first paragraph will have an introduction plus the overview. Next will be paragraph A and then paragraph B and then there will be a conclusion. Okay, so now we just discussed that we can divide our report into four paragraphs, namely introduction and overview, paragraph A, paragraph B and then the conclusion. Now we look at what are we going to write in introduction plus the overview. So this will be all in all, for example, you can write about three sentences for this paragraph. The first sentence would be, you would paraphrase the question. What does paraphrase mean? Paraphrasing means you will write the question in your own words, but it will have the same meaning as the question itself. We can add something to it. Then there will be the overview, which is the next sentence. Now, before overview, you can add one sentence here about data. But remember, this does not mean that you include the figures in the introduction. There are no figures in the introduction as per the data. We are just going to talk about how is the data measured. So, adding that sentence would depend upon you. If you think the introduction is becoming too long, you can take that sentence out. If you think the introduction is short, then you can add one sentence about data to it. What are the units of data? Then, what are you going to write in the overview? We'll add one linking word. For example, general, generally, in general. And then we'll give the key features of our graph. So let's first look at how to paraphrase plus what data sentence we do add. So the question said, the chart shows expenditure on consumer goods by two genders in 2016. How we can paraphrase this? We can write the word, the chart as it is, or we can say the bar graph. Then instead of the word shows, which is the verb here, 
we can add another verb to it. For example, demonstrates. So we can say the bar graph demonstrates the amount of money spent on five consumer goods and then you can add a bracket and then write cars, comma computers, comma books, comma perfumes and cameras and then the bracket close. By males and females in 2016. So that is what the paraphrasing is about. Then how to add about the units of measurement? What sentence to write? After paraphrasing the question in your own words, then full stop and then you start writing the data or the units of measurement are in thousands of dots. So that is the next sentence. So we have got two sentences in our introduction already framed with us. Now next we have to look at is what key features we are going to add. What are we going to look at? What are the key features of this graph? If you look at this graph, First of all, the first key feature you can look is who spent more money out of males and females on these five consumer goods. So who spent more money? Who spent more than the most and then the least amount? Most amount of money and then least amount of money. So these are the three key features we can look into and put them into one single sentence for our overview. So if you look at the graph, which do you see more? Black or the green? I guess you will see more black. So that means Females spend more money on these five consumer goods as compared to males. So who spend more money here? It's the females. Next we want to look at is on which consumer good most amount of money was spent. If you look at the graph, which is the highest bar? The highest bar is this black one, cars by females, around 500,000. So this is cars. By females. And the least amount of money was spent on cameras, the green one here. This one. Cameras. By the green, E is for males. So cameras by males. Now how we are going to put that into a sentence? So what we can write is, in general, females spend more money on these consumer goods as compared to men where the most amount of money was spent on cars by females while the least amount of money was spent on cameras by males in the given year. So these three sentences will make your introduction. Next, we are going to look at is the paragraph A and the paragraph B. Now, how we are going to organize the data into paragraph A and paragraph B, that is what we are going to look next into. How we are going to talk about is what you are going to include in your writing for paragraph A and paragraph B. Now, there are five consumer goods as you can see from the graph. What you can do is we can make a logical division of our goods into various paragraphs, into these two paragraphs rather. 
So what I have done is I look at where the consumer spending for females is more than males. For example, cars, books, and cameras. These are the three consumer goods where females spend more money than males. So I can put these goods into paragraph A. So I can write about them into the first paragraph, which is the paragraph A. Next, computers, they spend almost equal amount. Why? For the perfumes, females spend less money than the men. So I can put computers and perfumes into paragraph. So what you have to keep in mind is that you have to make a logical division of your work. So the, the structure should be logical so that you get marks for your coherence and cohesion. Next we are going to look into is or the most important point now is that we are going to include the data into these two paragraphs. So we are not going to only talk about that females spend more money on cars, books and cameras while they both spend equal amounts of money on computers. If you look at perfumes, the spend, um, females spend less money as compared to men. This is not the only thing we're going to write. We're going to include the figures now. For example, if you look at cars, how much did male, uh, females spend about 500,000? And how much the males spent? They spent about 450,000. So this is what we're going to include in our writing. So if you look at paragraph A, we can start our first sentence could be in terms of cars, females spent more money and then in brackets. You can write 500,000 as compared to men who just spent $450,000. Full stop. So that is the first sentence. Next, similarly, you can talk about books and cameras. So you can start your sentence something like that. If you look at books and cameras, Again, females spent more money. In brackets, you can give the figures. When you compare it or when you compare the spending with the men. So you don't have to repeat the females and males again and again. You can call them men and women as well. Now that was paragraph A. Now how to move from paragraph A to paragraph B. We will add a linker in the beginning of the paragraph B. What can we say? We can start paragraph B by saying, looking at computers, comma, it is observed that both men and women spent an equal amount of money. In brackets, you can write $450,000. Full stop. However, why am I adding however now for perfumes? Because for the rest, now this is the trend which is almost opposite to what we earlier talked about. So however, this word is going to tell and we're going to talk about something opposite to what we were talking about earlier. So if I say, however, men spend more money in brackets, you can write $250,000. on perfumes as compared to females who spent about 
on the same item. So this is how we are going to write a paragraph A and paragraph B. Finally, we come to the conclusion part, which is the last paragraph. Now, what does conclusion mean? Conclusion means summary of your report. Whatever analysis you have done, you're going to summarize that in a single sentence. Now, just like introduction, conclusion has no data. So this is just about reiterating or repeating what you almost already said, but in different words. For example, we can start our sentence with like to conclude or overall or in the end or in conclusion, comma, and then you can write about your summary. What is the summary for this graph? You can write in the end or from the analysis of the given graph, it can be seen that females are more spendthrift when compared to men. Full stop. That would be your conclusion in a single sentence. So that is all about graphs or specifically bar graphs for today. I'll see you till next week.